Welcome to the show and happy Memorial Day weekend. Always a, a great weekend here in the Ohio Valley and we've got a, a guest associated with Memorial Day weekend here on the show later on today, John Nanny, who is the Commandant of the Marine Corps League, Detachment 771, and has worked for veterans causes and so many other things associated with the military here in the local area for so many years. He'll be with us a little bit later on, but first off, I want to talk about some of the great Memorial Day weekend events that are always here in the Ohio Valley. The, the Ogden race is always one of my favorites. My law firm sponsoring that event again, and this year uh, the proceeds went to Laughlin Memorial Chapel, and uh, they're going to be used always for, for, for good causes that that uh, race goes toward. But so many people participate, old, young, and in between, and I always uh, enjoy seeing people get out there and, and uh, participating, whether they're running or walking, and seeing what their times are, and just seeing the smiles, and even see some crazy outfits uh, now and again. So always, always a great event. And then, of course, Ogilvy always has so many things uh, that are fun for the entire family throughout Memorial Day weekend and kind of kicks off the summer for everybody here in the Valley and youth baseball and softball games will be happening all over the place. There's some tournaments going on in, in Wheeling and Moundsville and other places. Uh, and of course, even in Pittsburgh, the Pirates are in town this weekend hosting the St. Louis Cardinals. So a lot of fun no matter where you may be here in the Ohio Valley this weekend. So uh, get out there and enjoy it and, uh, and get the summer started off right. But don't forget what this weekend's really all about. We'll talk a little bit more about that later on in the show. I want to recognize some community champions this week, and uh, this, this is near and dear to my heart. Um, these uh, individual students, 17 of them, were recognized by my law firm, Bordas & Bordas, uh, as anti-bullying, fighting for justice award winners uh, here this week. And I got to spend some time talking to these students, and you see why they were nominated by principals, guidance counselors, peers, people in the community. Uh, we give, they give this award to, to one graduating student at each of the high schools in Ohio County, Marshall County, and Belmont County, the three counties here locally where we have offices. And uh, we were able to recognize 17 people. And to, to see the nominations and why these kids were nominated is one thing. But then to meet them and talk to them and, and just see the type of class that they exude and to see why it is that they were uh, chosen for these awards. And these are given to, to the students who are kind, who treat others with respect, who stand up for other students who are maybe being picked on or they see a kid sitting over there by themselves at, at the lunch table and they go and become friends with them. And, you know, we always say that, you know, there are a lot of awards out there for great students and there's a lot of awards out there for great athletes and those things are great things, but a lot of that has to do with what God gave those uh, folks, you know. Uh, you can't go out and be a, a, an all-world basketball player if you just weren't given that God-given ability. But just about anyone can be nice and treat others with kindness and respect. That's kind of up to you. And so we wanted to start an award that would recognize the kids that were doing that. So my dad uh, came up with this idea about five years ago. We've been doing it ever since. And uh, we had a reception for those kids, and they each got uh, you know, a $500 uh, award to do whatever they want with that going forward toward their future and also get uh, four tickets to sit in our suite up at PNC Park for a, for a Pirates game and uh, they were all very appreciative but I, I really enjoyed the conversation hearing what they're going to do next because you know I think they're going to do great things with their lives every one of them I heard you know one was going to go into the military another one was going to want to be a dermatologist and just going on and on another one would be an exercise phys physiologist and uh, I want to recognize these uh, students each by name from Bardensville High School Brandon Reynolds from Bellsville High School Harley Loudon from Bel Air Scott Melman from Bridgeport, uh, Vitra Foster, from Cameron, James Henry Davis, from John Marshall, Elena Polinski, from Lindsley, Sydney West, from Martins Ferry, Austin Bassa, from Shadyside, Cameron Savage and Caitlin Weaver, from St. Clairsville, Gabriella Semancic, from St. John Central, Aaron Savage, from Union Local, Haley Porter, from Wheeling Central Catholic, Patrick Brown and Chris Costain, and from Wheeling Park, Grace Myers and Cross Wilkinson. And so congratulations to all of them and to their parents and teachers who all had a part in helping these kids understand what's the right thing to do and how to treat others. And I, uh, one of the things I shared with them at the reception was you know, to continue doing that throughout their lives because everybody needs love, everybody needs hugs, everybody needs a friend. And the more that they can do, do that and spread that goodness, uh, the better off the world will be. A quote this week, and again, tying into to the weekend that we have here in front of us. Uh, and this comes from Mark Twain, of course, one of the most famous authors. Uh, many of us have read his uh, novels over the course of the years, and he once said, patriotism is supporting your country all the time and your government when it deserves it. And I, I think that was an interesting quote because I think that there is a distinction between our country, our nation, and who may be in power at a particular time or what the government may be made up of. And the fact of the matter is, is that 
America deserves our respect, our honor, all the time. Living here and the people that have fought here and died for the right for us to have all the privileges that we have is something that should not just be neglected because we don't particularly care for the person that may be in power or a particular branch of the government or whatever it may be. Patriotism is an all the time thing. So I think that's a particularly great quote from Mark Twain because you don't have to necessarily agree with everything the government officials are doing to still be patriotic and you should be patriotic at all times. We need to take a break. When we come back, I'll be speaking with John Nanny, and I'm sure we'll be touching upon patriotism during the course of that conversation. Stay with us here on The Jamie Borda Show. When reviewing your oil and gas offers or royalty check statements, do you wonder, am I being offered a fair amount? Do I feel comfortable reading the statement? Do I have peace of mind? If you answered no to these questions, you need Bordas Mineral Management. Our passion is helping mineral owners protect and expand their mineral wealth. Our examiners tell you whether you're being treated fairly and getting paid what is rightfully yours. Bordas Mineral Management. Be protected. Have peace of mind. Recommended by the highest authorities. Danoon Lumber. It's like a bad one's coming. Yeah. Right? Welcome back to the show. This is my favorite time each week when I have a guest with me. And this week is no different. My guest is Commandant John Nanny who is the Commandant of the Marine Corps League Detachment 771, former State Commandant, and also former Commander of American Legion Post 1. Mr. Danny, thanks so much for being here today. It's indeed a pleasure. Well, you know, a long uh, history uh, of being involved with these different Marine Corps groups and different uh, military affiliations, and of course, Post 1, and uh, been more years than I even realized when we were talking before you came on the air, uh, I didn't realize you've been uh, around for as long as you have. 52-year member of the American Legion, probably about a 30-year member of the VFW, and a 20-year member, 25-year member of the Marine Corps League. Yeah. You know, a lot of people may not realize, you know, with, um, you know, w what the Commandant even is or what the Marine Corps League is. I mean, you know, what exactly is the Marine Corps League? Well, it's a veterans organization. Uh, that was uh, chartered in 1937 uh, by General John Lejeune, uh, past Commandant of the Marine Corps. And uh, basically, we accept anyone who served more than 180 days active duty as membership, uh, or as members. I was looking here, you have, have some papers here about the changing of the guard uh, that's about to take place um, June 15th. Yeah, and you've been uh, invited to that by the Commandant of the Marine Corps. That's a pretty that uh, significant thing. That blew my mind. Uh, yeah, getting an invitation from the Commandant himself asking me to attend the change of command ceremony where Brigadier General Austin Sparky Renforth is relinquishing command and unfortunately going back to Iraq for another year. But uh, there's another general by the name of Flynn who's replacing him. And... Uh, I'm sure that uh, we've got to know Sparky real well because he was a 1982 graduate of Wheeling Park High School. Uh, he joined the Navy right out of uh, high school, spent about three years in the Navy, kept taking tests to try and include, uh, improve his test scores. And finally, he was accepted to a prep school. He spent a year in prep school, and when he graduated from that, he was accepted by the Naval Academy, and he went through the academy, and he's been in the service uh, well over 30 years now, and he's obviously going to remain. Well, it's something else to have, you know, someone from right here in the Wheeling yes. area go to, to become a general and to, to have that type of responsibility. Yeah, I would, I'm kind of hoping he picks up his second star in Iraq. He deserves it. He has been an infantry officer all the way through his career, nothing but lead troops. Uh, tough work, I tough know work. he's very close with General Mattis, and uh, of course you know the history of General Mattis. 
t tough work and uh, you know and, and people don't realize I think sometimes they think um, you know, especially you know during times of, of relative peace they think well you know they're they're not really doing anything or they're not fighting right I mean it's 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 been difficult the whole way through here uh, for quite some time oh absolutely but what you got to realize is they're always in a state of preparedness uh, they're ready to go anywhere at any time if instructed to do so by our Congress Senate or the president uh, they're prepared and there's no hesitation on their part. You brought some of your hats with you. Let's talk about some uh, well, about sure, these. Oh, sure, sure. My American Legion cover, uh, past commander, as it says, a lot of uh, Mountaineer Boy State uh, pens. I've got my Marine Corps Eagle Globe and Anchor, and I've got the cross because I at one time served as chaplain, and the little uh, Star of David with the cross in the middle is the Legion of Honor from the Chapel of the Four Chaplains. So this one here that you're talking about, this um, star here, that's the, yes. that's from the chapel of the four chaplains. Yes. And that's one that I know means a lot to you. Oh my. Uh, there was four chaplains on February 3rd, 1941, uh, on a troop ship off the coast of New England. It was sunk by a German U-boat. Uh, six or 700 troops on board, plus the entire ship's staff. It was sinking rapidly because it, it blew up. And uh, the chaplains went about what chaplains do, helping all the wounded, getting everybody into lifeboats, uh, trying to help as many as they could possibly do it. When it came down to the end, they ran out of life jackets. So these four chaplains each, each removed their life jackets and put them on wounded troops and set them out into the boats to save their lives. But the last anyone saw of them, the three of them, were kneeling on the deck, arms folded, and praying as the ship went down. They gave their lives. Well, one of the chaplain's fathers it was a minister as well, and he wanted to do something to maintain their legacy. So he established the chapel of the four chaplains, and it's at the Naval Shipyard in Philadelphia. And uh, what they did was set up uh, a way where people in the community and state and across the nation who did more than was ever asked of them and went the extra yard to help anybody and promote patriotism, they wanted to recognize them in some way. So they set up three or four different areas where you could be uh, recognized. I received the Legion of Honor and by so receiving it, my name is on the wall at the chapel and I received it in 2012 when I was State Commandant of the Marine Corps League. But uh, since then, every year at the Veterans Program at the Upper Ohio Valley Italian Festival, we have awarded four or five local members, local people, these awards. And it's just something very near and dear to me, and I'm looking forward to this year's. Well, that's great. Well, congratulations on yeah. receiving that honor. I noticed I knew it was important because you have it on this hat and this hat on the one you're wearing. So I knew that was that's oh, yeah, a big one. Oh yeah, very, very. Now, I'm not allowed to have pins on the uh, Marine Corps League cover. Now you'll notice uh, one thing I wear with a great deal of pride is chairman of the Herschel Woody Williams Scholarship Foundation, Department of West Virginia. Woody is the sole surviving Medal of Honor recipient from the Battle of Iwo Jima. He's 94 years old, and yes, he did do the coin flip at the Super Bowl, yes, he did. along with 15 other Medal of Honor recipients. They unanimously elected him to do the flip. Uh, to this day, he's still traveling uh, all over the country, establishing Gold Star family memorials. And uh, he's already established in, I think, 36 states. And several states have multiple uh, monuments. I'd love to see one up here in the Northern Panhandle someday. Uh, but uh, this man is a genuine American hero. Uh, he has done so much. He, he's a lay minister on top of everything. Of all things, he was a career service officer with the Department of Veterans Affairs, and he lived on a horse farm. And he did all of his blacksmithing, all of his farming, you know, everything he did himself. But uh, at that age, he's overcome cancer twice and he still will reach out to anybody that has any interest whatsoever in 
promoting patriotism. Pretty fantastic. Yeah. We need to take a break. When we come back, I'll continue speaking with Mr. Nanny about things military and also some of his other interests with things such as Mountaineer Boys State. Stay with us here on the Jamie Borda Show. At Ultra Big Bank, we need to be assured you can make your payments. Yes. Well, buy them out. Acquire. Acquire. As I was saying, I'm not sure I see the value in your small account. That's when we went to Belmont Savings. They took the time to understand our needs. And they didn't make us feel small. Where the big banks are only interested in growing, Belmont Savings' interest was in us. Belmont Savings Bank, focused on your future. So, how was your first day? Oh, long. So, Josh asked me about you. Daddy's home. Go get him. For your home, for your life, for more than 50 years. The Hardwood Specialists. The Noon Lumber. Welcome back to the show. I've been speaking with my guest this week, Mr. John Nanny, Commandant of the Marine Corps League here, Detachment 771. And, you know, in talking about some of the things that you've been involved with, we were just alluding earlier to Mountaineer Boys State. I know that's something that you've been involved with for uh, longer than I've been born. Yes, uh, yes. You know, I'm 43 now, and I think you've been doing it even since before then. 48 years. And uh, yeah. I had the, the great uh, honor and privilege to be able to go to Mountaineer yes. Boys State when I was uh, in between my junior and senior years of high school at William Park and really enjoyed it got to what year was the, that so that would have been 1992 that the summer of 92 that I went okay and okay. Uh, really enjoyed that experience in addition to all the things that you learn it, it's also very great in terms of meeting other people from around the state mm -hmm. some of whom I've still stayed in touch with believe oh, it or not absolutely but, uh, that, but you got a, bu a bunch of kids going again this year yes uh, right now we've got uh, about 20 I was hoping to hit 30 but uh, uh, the numbers just weren't there and there's too many family conflicts, too many other activities going on. But uh, I've got a good solid 20 uh, ready to go, signed, sealed, and paid for. And that's just from here locally? Yes, that's just Ohio County. That's Central, Lindsley, and Wheeling Park. Yeah, and then, so these kids go, you know, in, with other students from all over the state. And, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of neat because you're, you're associated with, they assign you to a, to a cabin and yes. you've got the different counties and that you, you, that you represent, I guess, in that cabin. And it, it was my recollection. I'm trying to remember which one I stayed in. I feel like it was Gilmer, but I'm not positive. Could I, be. I, but, yeah. uh, but it was you know, interesting. It really uh, introduces you to, to some things that you've never been exposed to just through your regular schooling. Sure. You'll have uh, upwards of 400 young men and you have to consider the fact that these are the cream of the crop of each of the local area high schools throughout the state. And uh, there's a lot of competition, uh, a lot of activities, but primarily they're, to learn, they're there to learn about how government functions at the local, at the state, and at the national level. And every kid will be elected to something in some capacity. And throughout the course of the rest of the week, they'll actually serve in that capacity. And uh, it's probably the most uh, changing experience that I've seen kids go through. Uh, a lot of them go down there having no idea what it's about. And uh, they'll make friends there that they will have for the rest of their lives. And I, like I said, I've had several people get elected governor over the years. Uh, I just had a, a Boys Nation senator this past year. Uh, he, actually, he came to my orientation last week and helped me uh, orient the boys and their parents. If a student or their parent would like to see the student you know, be, able, be selected for Mountaineer Boys State, is there something they can do or how do they go about that well, process? Well, uh, they just have to meet the minimum uh, requirements of the guidelines for Boys State. It's like a 275, uh, uh, you've got to be recommended by your teachers, your counselors, somebody. So usually they'll make up an eligibility, eligibility list and uh, I'll go up and meet with them. And I, if they want to go, they're going. 
Yeah. You know, I'll find a sponsor for them. So if a student uh, or a parent is, is interested in that, they should go talk to a guidance counselor or something like that at the school and say, Absolutely. hey, I'd really be interested in this. Absolutely. Uh, you know, if you don't hear of anything about a list, ask why. Yeah. You know, call the counselor and say, I want my son's name on that list. And uh, like I said, if they show an interest, I will see to it they get there. What's the biggest thing that people can do for veterans now? I know you, you work so much with all the different uh, veterans organizations, and what's the number one thing that people could do? Well, it's kind of in interesting that you should ask that because last Friday at uh, West Liberty Elementary, I started off my presentation by asking how many of the kids had veterans in their family. Dads, mothers, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, grandparents. Over 90% of the kids raised their hand. And I asked them to do this one thing for me. Ask them about their experience. Get to know what they did when they were in the service. And above all, thank them for their sacrifice. Uh, the best thing that you ask me if they can do, don't forget them. Let them know that their sacrifices meant a lot and still to this day means a lot and we thank them for everything they did i can't let you go without asking about a pretty hot topic issue right yeah. now which is the nfl just came out and with a new policy regarding the national anthem you know a lot of controversy over the last nfl season or two about the players standing not standing taking a knee being in the locker room different things and the nfl came out and said if they are out there they will stand if uh, if they don't want to stand then they're to remain in the locker room and you know, what are the, what are your thoughts on on the policy they've come out with well probably a little too little too late uh, I can't respect I, how can I respect Roger Goodell and the NFL when they let it get this far they should have dealt with it heads on at the start penalize people find them do whatever they have to do but I would have every player who should be thankful that they're even there, I would have every person obligated to respect the flag. Uh, I've got not much hope in what they've proposed, but it's a foot in the door. So your policy would be every player is on the field, every player standing, every, fly, every player is saluting the flag. Absolutely. Yeah. They're there because of us. We gave them those freedoms. It may be they're right, but they're abusing it. Well, I think it comes a little bit back to the quote that I read from Mark Twain at the beginning yes. of today's show, which is that you may not always necessarily agree with everything that every government official is doing, but you still respect the country. You know? Oh, yes. And that's, uh, you know, th that's one Definitely. way that we show respect to our country and, and, and that we honor the folks that have fought for the rights that we have. Well, we I ask people, please don't disrespect it in my presence because... I've still got a little bit of redneck in me, and I'm afraid <laughs> I would overreact. Well, you've done a lot uh, for the folks here in this area and, and uh, for the youth of this area over the course of the years. I know there's not uh, been uh, too many Christmases that have gone by where you haven't reached out to us and said, hey, there's a, there's a kid that may not have uh, too good of a Christmas. For but years. There, there could be someone for that could help and out. Years. And uh, so certainly the, the people of this area owe you a debt of gratitude not only for for that but also for your service and sacrifices that you've made and uh, i sincerely want to thank you thank you jamie well, i appreciate you being here on the show okay. enjoy that trip down to south carolina i'm looking forward to it we need to take a break when we come back we'll take a few minutes and talk sports stay with us here on the jamie Bordas show people in nursing homes are some of the most vulnerable members of our society they're there because they can't take care of themselves those facilities have a duty to take care of our loved ones, and when they don't, it's important they're held accountable. We've not only collected record results against negligent nursing homes, but more importantly, we've helped so many families get the answers and closure they so badly needed. Bordas and Bordas, fighting for justice.
Welcome back to the show. It's time to talk sports and we talked a little bit about the NFL rule changes that pertain to the national anthem, but all other rule changes coming out here in the past week or so involve the kickoff and some big changes for the first time ever regarding the kickoff rules designed to improve player safety and to reduce concussions. Uh, it, it was kind of found that f five times as likely to suffer a concussion on a kickoff as on a regular play. So they're changing some of the kickoff rules that include the fact that there no longer will be a running start for the kickoff team. You don't have to start one yard behind the kicking line instead of five yards back. So you don't get that running start at the opponents. Also a requirement for the return team that eight of the 11 players in the return team be within 15 yards of the setup zone uh, or be in the setup zone, which is within 15 yards of the ball. Excuse me. So now within 15 yards from where the ball is kicked, there will be eight of the return players. Uh, there's no blocking allowed in the setup zone unless the ball is either caught or hits the ground until that point. No more wedge blocks, no more two man wedge blocks. There'll be no double teams by the return team. And the kickoff team has to have five guys on each side of the ball. So five guys on either side of the ball, uh, which is uh, a move that's designed to get, uh, you know, um, more people, um, you know, being blocked and not that free run by having a lopsided amount of guys on one side or the other. So a lot of changes to this kickoff rule. Um, they look at that, you know, even compared to punts where people are right there, you know, blocking each other one on one at the line of scrimmage and just think this will make it a lot safer than than one of the way things have been. So they're going to evaluate again next spring to see if it's working. But uh, we will see those changes immediately here this year for the 2018 NFL season. Sticking with professional sports, of course, the Pirates, uh, you know, four teams kind of still battling at the top of the National League Central. Josh Harrison back for the Pirates and Pirates go from first place one day to fourth the next to second the next, just depending on who's winning or losing. So not a whole lot to talk about other than it's still a close race here through the, uh, kind of the end of May. And we'll keep an eye on the Pirates uh, as the time moves forward in the NHL. Marc-Andre Fleury, former Penguins goalie into the NHL finals against the Caps. I like the Caps in seven. I just think it's their year. I think Ovechkin and crew finally get that uh, Stanley Cup. So I'll go with the, the Caps in seven. And uh, the NBA playoffs, of course, continuing on with uh, some battles, of course, in the conference finals. And I took the Warriors uh, at the beginning of the year and have been sticking with them. But uh, it's been uh, anything but easy for the defending champs throughout the playoffs. And uh, we'll keep an eye on that also uh, as the playoffs continue on. That's all the time we have this week. I want to wish you all a very happy Memorial Day weekend. And we'll see you again next time on the Jamie Borda Show.